So before we build out the next features, let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit. I realize that we don't actually need to deconstruct the item here. Let's replace this and just pass in this dot render item. Next, let's come up here and get rid of this bind method that we had put in. Then come to our render item and let's change this to an arrow function. Since we're not passing an item there, we'll have to deconstruct the item here. So let's do that here and replace the image with item. That looks much cleaner. Secondly, let's also make this load wallpaper method an arrow function. Once we do that, we can again get rid of this bind method here. If we refresh the app, we notice that it still works. So as it was mentioned by some of you, it's just better if we use arrow functions. The first thing that we'll be now working on would be the loading indicator. So if you notice, the loading indicator shows up and then there's this blank screen that comes up for a bit and then we see the image. So though there are a few tricky solutions to this, what we'll do is we'll just add another loading indicator to make it appear like the loading indicator is still there. So let's see how we'll do that. Let's come to our render item and here just wrap this view with another view. Give it a flex of one. Inside this we'll pass in another view which we'll position absolutely. Let's set the top to zero, left to zero, right to zero and bottom to zero. So it basically covers up the complete screen. Let's also give it a background color of black, which matches the background color of the loading indicator. Inside this, we'll place in the same loading indicator that we had created, give it a size of large and a color of gray. Let's also center this to the middle by using a line item center and justify content center on the parent element. Let's save that out. We get the loading indicator, which is again replaced by another loading indicator and it only goes away once the image shows up. So that looks much better. The second thing that we need to work on is to add the animation once we tap the image. For that, let's import an animated from React Native. And then in our constructor, we'll be creating a new prop called scale and we set that to a new animated value with a default value of one. So to begin with, this will have a scale of one. When we tap it, we'll reduce its scale. We'll also set up another prop called is image focused. And by default, we will set it to false. So what we'll do is once the image is tapped, we'll reduce the scale and we'll also disable the swipe on our flat list so that the images cannot be swiped at that time. So let's set up our scale style here. We'll say this dot scale is equal to, we'll say transform. What we want to transform is the scale and we'll set that to this dot state dot scale. Next, let's wrap our image with a touchable without feedback so that it can be clicked. So coming here, we'll say touchable without feedback. And in our render item method, let's wrap this image view with a touchable without feedback. We'll add a non press to this. And when this is clicked, we'll call another method called show controls. And we'll pass the item to it. Let's go ahead and create show controls. So we'll use the fat arrow function and we're taking one parameter, which is the item. Here, the first thing that we'll do is we'll say this dot set state. We'll get access to the previous state. And inside this, we'll update is image focused and set it to the opposite value of what it currently is. So we'll say not state dot is image focused. So if it was false, it'll be set to true. If it was true, it'll be set to false. In the callback method of the set state, we'll be animating our scale. So we'll check if this dot state dot is image focused is true. Then we want to scale the image down. We'll say animated dot spring this dot state dot scale to value 0 0.9 and we'll start it. Else, if the image was already scaled down, when we tap it, we want it to scale back to one. See here, we'll say animated.spring again. This.state.scale. Set that to a two value of one and start that. Now that we've created our scale property, we need to pass this in to our animated view. So come down here in our render item, replace this view with an animated dot view. 
Next, we need to pass in the style here. So let's wrap this into an array. And here, let's pass in this dot scale. So if you remember, in the beginning, we had created this dot scale here, and we had added the transform property, which is set to this dot state dot scale. Let's save that. And let's test that out. When we tap the image, it scales down to 0 0.9. We tap it again, it comes back to one. However, when we tap the image, if we try and swipe, we see that the image is still swipe. We want to disable that. So for that, we had created is image focused. So let's come to our flat list. And here, let's say scroll enabled and set that to enabled when this dot state dot is image focused is false. So if we save that. When the image is not tapped, we can scroll. When the image is tapped, the scroll is disabled. Now let's go ahead and add the action bar here at the bottom, which will slide in when we tap on the image. So come up here, outside our touchable without feedback in our render item method, we'll pass in a new animated dot view. And let's also style that by positioning it absolutely. So we'll say position absolute. We'll give it a left of zero, a right of zero. And for the bottom also, we'll give it a value of zero for now. Let's give it a height of 80, a background color, of white and save that out. So there we see our action bar. What we'll do is we'll animate this bottom property so that it changes when we tap on the image. For that, let's come up here and below this dot scale, let's create a new property called this dot action bar Y. So we'll interpolate over this dot state dot scale so that when the scale animates, in relation to that, we'll animate the action bar Y. So that takes two properties, input range, which will be from 0 0.9 to 1, which is the range between which we're scaling the image. And accordingly, the output range will vary from 0 to minus 80. So when the image is scaled down to 0.9, we'll make this move up to 0. Otherwise, when it scales to 1, we'll move it down to minus 80. Coming back down here, let's change this bottom value to this dot action bar y. Let's save that. Let's tap this. And we see this action bar comes up. We tap it again. We see the action bar goes out. Now inside this action bar, we want to pass in three icons. For that, let's import in the icons from Ionicons. So here we'll say import Ionicons from at expo forward slash vector icons. We'll also import in touchable opacity here. We'll be wrapping our icons with this touchable opacity to make them clickable. Come back down to animated view. Inside that view, let's pass in another view, pass in a touchable opacity, and then pass in an Ionicon. So we'll say Ionicons. Name we want is iOS refresh, the color white, and a size of 40. Let's style the view a little bit. So we'll say flex of one, align items of center to align the icon to the center, and justify content center as well. To the touchable opacity, We'll add an active opacity prop and we'll set that to 0 0.5 and we'll add non-press, which for now we'll just say load images. We'll duplicate this twice and just replace the icons here. So the second one will be iOS share and the last one will be iOS save. And actually I was meant to pass in a function here so that it doesn't continuously call the alert. And I'll just refresh that again. Now, obviously we'd given this a background color of white, so we can't see that. Let's change that to a background color of black. Our action buttons are showing up, but we want to show them horizontally. So we'll just add a flex direction of row. And we'll also say justify content space around to space them evenly. Now, if we tap that, we see we're getting our three icons. Tapping on any icon, we'll just alert load images for now. So in the next part, which is the last part of the series, we'll set up these action buttons. Clicking on the refresh button, will load new wallpapers. Clicking on the share button, will bring up that shared dialog. And clicking on the save button, will save the image to the photos. Till then, I hope you guys try this out. And please like, share and subscribe.